Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty three Chevy Bolt EUV without launch control. Rank boost, I guess. Ooh, not good. Oh my god, that was bad. There that was we go. Sport mode, torque steer. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> and we're just over half battery. Horsepower and torque. Two hundred horsepower, two hundred and sixty-six pound-feet of torque from one electric motor and a sixty-five kilowatt-hour battery. And what's the max range? 397 kilometers or 247 miles. So what is the point of a Bolt EUV? I know there's a Bolt EV. They both got updated at the same time. So this is like an SUV kind of? Okay, so if I were to hazard a guess as to why this exists, it's to bring in people who are tricked into thinking this is an SUV because, spoiler alert, it's kind of really not, but it has some of the proportions of an SUV because it's slightly larger on the exterior than a Bolt. My theory is that they can make more money if they have an SUV to sell. They already had the Bolt, which was doing well, and this is like the middle ground until the Equinox and the uh, Traverse EV or whatever it is comes out. Yeah, but this is like barely bigger than the Bolt. It's barely more expensive than the Bolt and it gets slightly worse range. Okay, how much bigger is it than a regular Bolt EV? Uh, I think it's what, like six inches longer in total length? And then 0.2 inches wider, 0.2 inches taller, but it does give you three more inches of room in the back seat, which is actually a big deal. Jacob right now is sitting with my child seat behind him and you know how many complaints he's given me about that? Zero. Zero. In the front, but in the back, it's actually okay for knee room, but headroom, I'm, I'm surprised that the extra scooping in the roof didn't actually help me that much. Is that 0.2 or whatever? We don't even know how <laughs> yeah, it works yeah. like, Okay, and then the trunk, I figured UV for utility vehicle, right? Yeah. I feel like this is the exact same space as a regular Bolt from the videos I've seen from like looking at photos and comparisons. Uh, I'm like, this doesn't seem that good. I expect utility vehicle that I could put my stroller all the way in on the ground. Right? I would expect that as well, yeah. Just like my Mazda CX-5, right? Yeah, or most SUVs, especially ones in this class. I said SUVs. This yeah. is an EV, uh, a UV. Whatever. So I did manage to fit my stroller in there after a little bit of frustration on Instagram. Like, what is this trash? I realized the bottom floor could come off and then the stroller can sit up nicely. Okay. So that is good. All right. It does have a ton of room, kind of like a uh, caravan style when you mm. pull out that bottom floor. S stow and go-ish. And that bottom floor is where you put your charging cable because the front is not a frunk, it's just engine. I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but this armrest is bothering the heck out of me from the passenger seat. That, that is on my notes of, of stuff while driving this, because I really wanted to drive this, so I spent like a solid week driving it absolutely I li I can't get comfortable. <laughs> just gonna sit like this. But the trunk room, okay, it's, it's just enough. Like even when I went to the garden center, I could barely fit like a row of, of, of uh, Plants? Pan pansies. Jalapenos? I got pansies. Okay. And they barely fit in there. I was like, damn. Like, more would fit in an M2 trunk. So what you're saying is it's not really a UV, it's just an EV. It's a trick. Yeah. They're tricking people, and I think they're doing a good job. And we will tell you what the marketing says at the end of the video. And then you get a little bit of different looks with this compared to the EV. Uh, yes, and this is also the red line package, which you can't get on the regular Bolt EV. Yes, it's the upsell. Yeah. It, it makes sense. People want utility vehicles, and they are offering a SUV-like. <laughs> SUV-like, yeah, yeah. So can you tell me the differences in looks between a Bolt EV and a Bolt EUV? Uh, no, you can't. I have to see them side by side. Yeah. Because like, this It's hard looks... to tell. I, I couldn't even figure it out because half the time I see an EUV, I don't know if it's an EV or not. Yeah. So if you look at the front, if it wasn't all blacked out, we have a little black pattern on the side with the headlights that connects farther down on the EV where this doesn't, it's more separated. Okay. And then at the back, it's a little bit different too, but it all looks very, very similar. Except the badge. That's where I look for. Yeah, yeah. And then we've <laughs> got the red line badge. We've got the st red lines on the wheels we got the red line on the mirror caps <laughs> it, 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 it looks so budget on the mirror caps like i'm okay with the ones on the wheels because it's actually painted on yeah and then shout out to our friend alex brown who got a red line traverse and then we also hooked him up with a set of tux mat so take a look at that you can also get tux mat for the bolt euv which would be great for driving this all winter tux mat.com slash the straight pipes and then to interrupt the looks when you get in 
your, you'd see your tux mat with that low entrance floor. Oh, that is actually nice. This would be probably great for older people as well. Yes. I don't know if the EV has it as, should, as, the, as low, but it's nice. We should call older people distinguished people. The, for boomers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to be called a boomer, whatever. And then back to looks. This one also has a huge moonroof, which is the sun and sound package for the EUV. That's looks, interior looks? I mean, exterior, if you look from the top. <laughs> from a drone? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I honestly, I think this thing looks all right. I, I have no real issue with what it looks like. I think the wheels are just a little too small, kind of look a little bit funny, and the recommended Continental tire would be the Pure Contact LS. So it's nice that these are blacked out because uh, when I went to the zoo, where there was free flow charging. Oh, it worked? Which it all, well, the one I first plugged into didn't work, okay. but the rest did work. That's good. And it was free and I was fully charged up by the time I left, which, you know, isn't sustainable. Like they should be charging money for of this course. stuff. Even like rebates for EVs shouldn't really exist since they're in such high demand. Yeah. There was a white one or silver, I can't even remember these days, parked next to this and it had like the same wheels, but light colors. Yeah, I think that would kind of work better. I think this looks better. I mean, it, this looks better, yeah. but to see the accents of the red line yeah. stuff. I still like the looks of that old green one we did. That yeah, one was yeah. so cool. That was just like juiced up green, uh, like over the top. Smug, like that South Park episode from like 19 years ago. Oh yeah, and the uh, the GV60, same color I think, probably pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. So then do you like the looks of this more than an Ionic? No, absolutely not. How about more than a Kona EV, Kia Soul EV, Nero, or uh, MX-30? No, 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 and no. But hang on, there's one that you forgot to mention, which is also a competitor, and I think this 1,000% looks better than Volkswagen ID4. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. I that is so, the so. worst car that I've ever driven in history, and I want to put that on uh, a video right now. One thing I hate about the looks of this is that the turn signal lights are at the very bottom, not where like your tail lights are. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things I just hate in modern cars. Fair. And I want you to talk about all the driving, but first I want to talk about infotainment. Okay. Can you know how much I love infotainment? Dude, I know you Am I the only car reviewer who loves infotainment? Loves, probably. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone talks about it. Yeah, but no one really loves it. I do like that this is massive. Okay, we got a nice big screen. We got a volume knob, tuning knob, home button. When you've got your Apple CarPlay hooked up, you can hold the home button and it'll toggle between those two screens. Apple CarPlay was shown in the news right before April Fool's Day that it is not going to be in future uh, GM electric cars that yeah. they're gonna have their own thing. I asked GM in two separate emails and I was completely ghosted about the topic so I assume this is for real it's going forward and they're just trying to avoid anyone having to talk about it. Title of the video RIP Apple CarPlay. No that's that's <laughs> that's not for this one. <laughs> no but yeah apparently we're not gonna have Apple CarPlay in future GM products. So if you are looking for a vehicle that does have Apple CarPlay, go to tsp.truecar.com and buy one of those vehicles is my recommendation. Get your Bolt today, not the future Bolt. Yeah, but if you would love Android Auto, uh, you can get yourself one of these in the future. And it's wireless too, which is cool, but I prefer plugged in. And by the way, it also has an app that I'm using that's pretty sweet. You can start the car, turn off the car. You can't set the climate to preheat it which kind of sucks. Like, or you oh, can, but you can't set what the temperature you want it yeah, to Yeah, you be can't, like, I'm like, I, So it's I, like whatever the previous it, one was. It's a cold morning, I want to heat it up, but like, no, like whatever it was, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But the app kind of sucks that it sends you notifications to update the terms of service almost every single day that I use it. Oh my God. And, and you can't actually read it, yeah, so you're obviously. just agreeing to something that there's no possible way you can stick to. Sure, yeah. But it's cool that there is an electric map mode where you can be very specific about what charger is where and from what brand, so mm. that is cool. What about the uh, 360 camera in this? Because we actually have one. I love it, top trim kind of thing, and it's pretty good. The only thing that I don't like is that I can't find a view to make the rear camera like super wide angle, because mm. when I'm backing out of my driveway, I've got like a hard fence there. You can put your hand on the wheel for me. Um, super cruise, <laughs> not available. Uh, I want to be able to just see like both ways like I can in my CX-5 where I can toggle between like that like focused view or like wider because you know little kids start running. But it's stuff. pretty sick that a car like this, I mean and I it's love, because I'm thinking of this as like a little compact car but it's an SUV yeah. which at this point kind of should have that stuff. Exactly. It also has a, a camera reverse mirror whatever backup mirror so. But I do love that there's a 360 camera. Yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about is the infotainment. We have a little leaf mode here. Yep. So that gets you all your energy modes and stuff while you're driving and it's always down there at the bottom. So that's super nice to have. We can see our impact, which gives you scores. And you know how much I love scores. Nothing's better than the butterfly score in that Ford uh, Focus yeah, yeah, EV. Yeah, uh, uh, first Focus EV. That, yes. was, that was the best. But this is also good, you get your history and it's nice seeing that kind of stuff. That's and your flow, because this is only front wheel drive, yeah. even though it's a 
UV. Yeah, but it's fairly clear. The only thing that's not clear in any gauge cluster that I could find is there's no actual battery percentage. There's battery logos, there's plus minus, there's distances, there's no actual percentage. Only on the app. Make sure you subscribe so you can have the app subscription and check your percentage. Subscribe to the Straight Pipes, it's free. Subscribe so Jacob can drive now. I'm gonna launch this by pressing the biggest button in this vehicle. The off button, okay, hold it, yeah, hold the, it. The traction off hold button. it. All right, okay. Spore mode, give me spore mode. Oh yeah, race flags. And we're at just over half still. Okay. Good speed, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of did nothing there, and it's not torque strain too bad, but I just find it hilarious that the largest button in this entire vehicle is the traction off button. No, like, keep, keep it off, keep it off. Okay, okay. We need to find out if when we crank the wheel and floor it, it goes beep, 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 beep. Power-wise, it's okay. It doesn't feel as slow as the Volkswagen ID4 did, even though it's got very similar numbers, but I guess this probably weighs a little bit less. It's nice. It's like what it's, I expect out of like an Econo box. It's fine. An electric car, even though it's kind of luxury. From a launch. Okay, you, you need to hold that off again because it's turned back on once you hit a certain speed. So we're at a stop, Yuri. Let's see if we crank the wheel all the way, if it can still do burnouts like the last one could. Traction fully off, race flag on. Uh, yeah, very sketchy ones. It, it bogs but you down. Th there more. is, yeah, there is something still flashing, even though we were fully off. Because once you hit a certain speed, it like enables. So it, this is a, a less freedom Whatever. of doing silly stuff. Well, we have to test out, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. fun. Okay, so power-wise, once you're actually driving, let's see, we're going speed limit here. Oh, that's totally fine. That's way better than from a launch. It's very good, yeah. This is good. First thing that annoys me is my driving position. I'm where I should be, comfortable. My knee is smashing into this corner. It is the worst. Yeah, I figured that would happen to you because it like barely touched from, it was, like getting close from my knee at certain spots. I'm like, oh, It's gonna so bad that I would never consider purchasing this vehicle ever in my life. That's how bad it is. At six foot one and a half. Yeah, terrible. With longer legs than torso. Deal breaker. And the next thing is this center console from the driver's position. Like the armrest gets in the way. Yeah. Like, oh, when I turn the wheel, I like clips. Someone told me a solution is this because they have a similar thing to this, which That's is like not a solution. In Europe. Try it. Try it. Try it. I mean, it's it's just not a solution. Like, I know. I don't it know. Works. I don't know how they could fix it besides using a Volkswagen ratcheting thing. But I'm sure there's like patents on things. Probably. Right? Okay. So you mentioned a couple buttons that this infotainment has earlier. Uh, I can't see them from my driving position. I have to go like this to see the volume, the home button, and the uh, whatever. Yeah, check. I couldn't really see them either. You can't, once you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there's there's weird annoyances with this car. The car is generally pretty good. Like the actual steering and driving this car is totally fine. The suspension that isn't too bouncy like we found on a lot of other EVs. For electric car, it's great. Exactly, and it's, it's not too stiff. It's just like, all right, this is where it should be. Like, this is car. Yeah, how about Cliche Corner? Because you know how much uh, performance driving I did while I had this for a week? Zero, I bet. I don't think I did any. I think I, I ran, I, ran, I did a red light and passed the guy to get on an on-ramp, and yeah. that's it. Okay, so we're gonna go through the Cliche bump, and that's totally fine for an EV. That That's comfortable. And we're sport mode, traction off. <laughs> Definitely body roll, but it, Okay, understeer on throttle, obviously, and send it in. And it's not bad. It's actually not the worst. Is it fun? No. Tires are screaming, but it's not that bad. It's okay. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Definitely don't go out of your way to visit Cliche in this car. But for daily driving, totally fine. Actually, better than some other EVs, like the Volkswagen ID4. <laughs> okay, for daily driving, what I love the most about this is the way you're driving the electric car, the way you have regen, the way you have one pedal driving. So when you turn on the car, your one pedal driving was off. If I click this button below drive, let off. Oh yeah. Nice, and if I turn that off. The logo looks like a hold Brake button. hold assist, yeah. yeah. And when you let it off, it still regens a bit when you let off, but if you're driving and I put it in neutral, then we're stuck at one kilowatt, I'm trying to which is it. awesome that it shows that specific number and not just like a percentage, even though there is a gauge mode where you can get rid of that and just see a percentage. Yeah, the coast is nice. Uh, I would have liked that incorporated into the paddle. Tell me about the paddle. We have one. And all that paddle really does is you can use it as a brake. Like I don't have to use my foot. Yeah, and you can come to like full stops so easily. Like I drove so many days in this car without using any brake pedal. There, complete stop. But if you're coasting in neutral, that paddle does not work anymore. Yeah, nobody should be really putting their car into neutral while driving. You can. So like, if you want to super hyper mile, 
you got to be using the neutral for coasting and stuff. Like you have probably, to. yeah. If you know, like this hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in neutral, and then you're not using it. Because what's the point of regenning if you need the speed to go back up, right? Let's see how far up we can get with pure coasting. <laughs> this is a full full test of EV. I think we'll actually. This is going to be pretty good. Not going to lie. And if you had in drive with oh, regen yeah. off, you wouldn't have made it up to the top of this hill. Dude, we could probably go all the way to cliche without doing anything and just coasting. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, if you want to be that guy, okay. set some records. I'm going to be that guy. No, no, just leave me in neutral. This is actually pretty interesting. This is fun. And, and how much do you like the gauge cluster? It shows everything so clear. I it, love how you have your max and min, too. That is cool, because then you know what your impacts are and how your driving is. Although, I just would have liked percentage somewhere there, but I guess they just chose not to confuse you with an extra meter. But uh, the actual gauge is good. And by the way, I am still coasting through all this in neutral. Yeah. I'm you, just picking up speed going downhill. Do you think we're going to make it up this hill, Yuri? I don't think so. Not a chance. I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying to like. Yeah, yeah. I didn't take that turn as safely yeah, as we could. Yeah. Okay. But like, no, no one behind me. Full safety. No, we're not gonna make it. Okay. No. Yeah, I. We can still talk while you do this. How about these climate control buttons? Pretty nice, eh? Uh, yeah. Just trying to check my mirrors here, Yuri. I put it in drive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we didn't make it. Um, so see our impacts. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Anyways, we got hard buttons for everything climate. Yeah, which is nice. Like totally good except everything is gloss black which totally sucks like may, literally everything they're trying to make this luxurious that's why it's got the what's more luxurious than spider webbing and cracks and and dust on everything yuri whatever man we've got <laughs> heated seats ventilated seats heated steering wheel which is awesome yeah all that stuff is great and then the next thing that's great that you can only get on the euv is super cruise it works well when it works but in the city of toronto doesn't work on the 427 doesn't work on a lot of the 401 in a lot of different directions and doesn't work on some parts of the QEW, some parts of the Gardener. If you're using it to go to rush hour traffic in the city, it's not going to be your savior. You should get a BMW instead with their cruise control. Yeah, or uh, a Hyundai or something like that. Yeah, because like like, well, BMW Fox. has the hands off watching your eyes under yeah. 50 and that'll work on like where this won't a lot of the time. But we've driven uh, Super Cruise in many other cars. We actually like to take it on road trips because it's it's so good for yeah. interstate. Like, interstate, walks. yes. It's that, and that's what it's meant for. Yeah, but in city, like, okay, 427, there's no construction there right now. Yeah, and there hasn't been since no, Escalade, you're right. You're right. and it still isn't mapped. Yeah. And then a couple other cool things. Uh, behind your steering wheel, you've got the volume and tuning knob controls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like a lot of other cool cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do not have uh, presets on the on the door, which sucks. Yeah, and then we have a blacked out Chevy logo. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, red line. Yeah. And do you like that? Do you mind that your lumbar is only Ford and back? Uh, it's not the worst see. in this, it's pretty all right. You spent all the time in this, so I haven't actually tested it, but uh, it's a little high. I would have liked it to be a little bit lower. And with the sunroof, we get a better sound system. It's pretty okay. With the sunroof? It's a sound and sun. Oh, yeah, that's a package? Yeah. Wow, okay. Interesting. Okay, cup holders, they were great. No issues. So that's a pass. Yes. And wow, visors. look at this cheap material around them, though. Bro, like, this, this is still a Chevrolet. This, this might as well be a nice. This like, is still a Chevrolet at the end of the day. Okay. Three, two, one. Full pass. Full pass. You know who else drives a Chevrolet? Me, Corvette Z06. That's why you got your Monte Carlo shirt. That's right. Shout out Dave. I'm waiting for you to get Dale. your. Dave, sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got distracted <laughs> by everything in front of me. Do it for Dave. Do it for Dale. Dave Senior. My bad. RIP, respect. Sorry about that. Okay. I think that's pretty much everything about this. I love this car. I think it's great. You kind of don't like it and your knee doesn't fit. Yeah, I actually hate it because of that. And there's actually way better competitors priced very similarly to this. Oh, okay, and one competitor, one feature that I like more that this doesn't have, I like that Volvo C30 that when you get in, you don't need to turn on the car. You can just put it in drive and stuff. Oh yeah, this still has like a regular power button. Yeah, and I think the the I Volkswagen ID had that too. That's something I like, but I understand why it's not in here. Okay, so we should get to the price. First, I think we need to check what the marketing is and see if we nailed the point of this non-SUV SUV. Read it to me. The new Bolt EUV is the best of the Bolt EV packaged in an SUV-like vehicle with more technology and features giving customers more choices and reasons to switch to electric. This is an opportunity for Chevy to capitalize on the success we've built with the Bolt EV and bring in new customers to the Chevy family. Does this really have more technology and capabilities than the Bolt EV? Super, super Cruise? Oh yeah, you're right. 360 oh. camera? Damn it, marketing! And SUV-like, it is SUV-like, it's not wow. SUV. Wow, SUV-like, wow. Like, I, I, as much as this is kind of, and they're building on the Bolt name by having it. Wow, in, marketing. They kind of, we, what we guessed was the point, they hit it so hard. Yeah, we were pretty close, but yeah, they, they got that marketing. To bring in new customers who want 
an SUV that's electric with more tech. Boom, let's get to the price. This one is 50,593. Yeah, it's a lot, but this is like top, top trim. Yes, it is. And competitors to this would be like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which I would take that over this. The Kona EV, again, same thing. The Volkswagen ID4, everybody already knows the answer to that. I would take this. Mustang Mach-E, I would obviously take that over this, but that's a little bit pricier, especially in the higher trends. And this might be easier to get, right? That's one of the reasons you might settle for this or go for this. Yes. And after the recalls, I even plugged this. Whoa, whoa, what recalls? I plugged this into my house to charge within six feet of my house, unattended overnight, and I was not worried that it would catch on fire. Did the recalls affect, I guess it's the same powertrain as the it, bullets, Yeah, it so. affected everything up to 2022 from 2017. Okay, so there was a fire safety recall. Yeah, yeah, like I think 15 caught fire in people's houses. All right, well, we're That's not on fire. No, they, they recalled everything and like they're back on sale. Okay. So overall, really like this SUV, EV, love the way it drives, and I'd love to hear from you guys. What would you take this over? Would you take this over the regular EV? Was it good marketing? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know, because I'm curious, because I already gave you all my thoughts. I think, See you guys with the next video. I think they got it right. Okay. Right enough. I think this just... The, both EVs should no longer exist. Oh!